Hello everybody, welcome back to V Project UK. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the third stage of paint decontamination, which is the claying stage. And we're mainly going to be discussing whether you should be using a clay bar or a clay mitt. So, let's start the video. If you haven't seen them already, we'd highly recommend watching our first two videos about paint decontamination. Stage one, which is tar removal, and stage two, which is iron decontamination. We've got two videos out already, and this is the third stage, which is clay removal, and we'll talk about that now. If you've been detailing for a while, then claying will not come as something new to you. However, a lot of people may not have heard of claying and may not have used a clay mitt before, and we're going to try and go through those processes in today's video. The first stage, tar removal and iron removal, as mentioned in the start of the video, we've got two videos out already discussing these two stages, are classed as your chemical decontamination stages. A clay then goes into physical decontamination, which means you're physically decontaminating the paint by using the clay to get all the impurities and contamination off of the paint surface itself. And you'd use something like a clay like this, a smoothing clay bar finish restorer from Built Hamber. This is a medium finish grade. You've also got a soft grade clay from Auto Finesse. And then you've got your various grade clay mitts as well. So this one is a soft finish, but you can also get medium and hard. And what I'm trying to say is that clays come in different grades. You've got soft, medium and hard. And there's three different grades for a reason. And we're going to talk about that a little bit now. Whilst detailing, what you want to try and do is be as least aggressive as possible in all of the steps. You want to try and achieve the desired result by being as least aggressive on the paint surface because you want to cause as less scratching and marring and holograms and cobwebs as possible. When you get to the clay stage, you are physically going to be removing contamination off the surface of the paint and this will cause scratching. The grade of clay you use will be determined by how much contamination you've got on the paint surface and how well it might have been maintained before. So you'd always start with a fine clay, which will cause ideally the less amount of scratching. If that doesn't work, you would then move on to a medium finish, etc, etc. And different clays have different properties when removing the contamination off the paint surface. When you clay, you will cause scratching on your paint surface. There's no getting away from that. And I just want to talk about a little bit about that scratching now. Our philosophy at V Project UK is to be responsible detailers. You need to responsibly detail your car and know exactly the limitations of the paint that you're actually dealing with. As we mentioned before, a clay stage will cause scratches because you're going to pick up imperfections and that is going to cause scratching along the surface of the paint. If you've got a ceramic coating already, you should never do a clay stage because that will scratch the ceramic coat and that will need to either be polished out, removing a lot of the ceramic coat and most probably reapplied. So before you start a clay stage, you should have done your tar removal and your iron removal, which are the two chemical decontamination processes, and that should cause minimal scratching. The only time you might cause scratching during a chemical stage is when you're doing the iron removal and you're actually exfoliating the surface with a damp microfiber towel. Again, that's discussed in our iron removal video, which you should watch. When you get to the clay stage, you need to know exactly how much clear coat you have on the surface of the vehicle before you start claying, because this will cause scratches and you'll need to machine polish those scratches out. But unless you know exactly how much clear coat you have to play with, you shouldn't really be clay barring because you're going to need to remove those scratches. And if you're not removing those scratches, then you're going to cause more scratches, which defeats the purpose of detailing. You want to try and get that surface as clean and scratch free as possible. In order to make sure you know how much clear coat you have, you need to use a paint depth gauge to actually measure the clear coat before you clay bar. You could also be in a situation where you have a single stage paint, which means you're going to cause scratching on that paint and you need to know how much paint you have to actually remove surface imperfections that this will cause. We've also got another video out which is titled when to paint decontaminate and that will discuss when you should actually go through a claying or decontamination process. In a nutshell, you want to do it for summer prep and winter prep. 
get your paint prepared for the summer and the winter. You don't always necessarily need to use a clay, however, the clay stage is what will remove most of the contamination from your paint surface. So it's always advised if you're going to apply a ceramic coat. If you're going to apply a wax or a sealant, an example of a wax, it's not necessary, it's something you can do. With a sealant, a clay stage is something you should do. And with a ceramic, it's something you definitely want to do because you want to get the surface as pure and clean as possible so that the ceramic coat bonds to the surface of the paint as best as possible. You're going to go through all the time and effort and cost of doing that ceramic coating or paying someone to do that ceramic coat and you want to get the maximum performance from it. So from our perspective and our experience, a wax you can do, a clay stage, a sealant you should do a clay stage and a ceramic coating you definitely want to do a clay stage. But we're just going to talk about some considerations that you need to take now. Here is an example of a paint depth gauge which you could use to measure the depth of the paint. As just mentioned, we'd always recommend measuring the depth of the paint before you clay bar because you're going to need to remove the scratches that claying will cause, but you'll need to know how much clear coat you have before you start claying. So if you cause too much scratches, uh, you know that you can't remove them because you might not have enough clear coat to play with. So this is a vital stage before you start claying. Another consideration we want to talk about is that of layering. We've discussed layering in several of our previous videos because that's something that's really important but not a lot of people will take a lot of time to consider. When clay barring, a lot of people will opt to use something like detailing spray. Now while this will provide some lubrication, it won't provide enough lubrication for actually claying a vehicle and will again will cause more scratches by not using correct lubrication. What you should do is use a dedicated clay lubricant such as Glide from Auto Finesse or something similar because this will provide the lubrication required for the claying stage. The other thing that this will do is it won't leave behind any layers. For example, if you use a spray wax, once you're actually finished claying, what this is doing is leaving behind a layer of wax and that could be masking some scratches and imperfections that's caused by the clay, which you won't see unless you use a prep product or an alcohol wipe to remove the wax, which means you're just doubling up on the work. You should always use a clay lubrication product, a dedicated clay lube, for example in the uh, case of Auto Finesse clay. However, something like Built Hamba is actually designed to be used with water, which is good as well because there's less cost involved in terms of buying a separate lubrication product and it won't leave anything behind. The more you leave behind, the more you have to remove when you get to the machine polish stage and it just makes your life more difficult. So. Do not use any spray waxes or detailers. Always use a clay lube or follow the instructions of the clay itself. For example, this one, you can use just water, but that's not the same for every clay you might purchase. So on this test panel, having measured the actual depth of the paint using a paint depth meter, which we'll cover in a future video when we get to paint correction, we know we're safe to clay this surface because we've got enough clear coat to actually machine polish out any scratches that we might cause. However, this is a test panel, so it doesn't really matter. What I've got is a small piece of clay and also the clay mitt, and I'm gonna show you just very quickly a demonstration on this panel about the methods to use when using either product and the advantages and disadvantages of both. So we'll start with the clay bar. I've got a small piece of soft clay from Auto Finesse. And literally what you would do, lubrication is the name of the game. So add some lubrication to the surface and also to the actual clay bar itself. And what you would do, using no pressure at all, first of all, mold the clay into a small disc like this, and using virtually no pressure, just go backwards and forwards in a motion like this, and you should be able to hear just how much scratching you can hear, which is the actual clay picking up all of the contamination from the surface of the vehicle you can see just how much dirt that has picked up and this was a clean panel so you would literally do that once it gets dirty just knead it I'm trying to do this one-handed but you would basically fold it into another disc and then just carry on claying the surface of your vehicle until you can see there's so much more dirt come off until the surface is clean and ready to accept a paint polish. So that's the clay bar. In terms of the clay mitt, the process is very, very similar. You just add loads of lubrication 
to the actual surface you want to clean and onto the mitt itself as well. Bear with me doing this single handed. Again, using no pressure, you would literally just go over the surface of the vehicle, removing any imperfections there may be on the surface. And this will grab all the embedded contamination from the surface itself. So there's a quick demonstration. But we're just going to talk about the differences between the mitt and the bar now. Ladies and gents, I just wanted to quickly show you this. I've just wiped the panel that I've just done a clay mitt on. And I don't know if you can see on the video just how much scratching that clay mitt actually caused. I'm hoping you can see the line just there where I actually stopped doing the clay mitt. And I'm hoping you can see all the imperfections that the clay mitt just caused, which goes back to my point of the necessity to machine polish after you've done a clay stage and also making sure you've got enough lacquer to be able to do the paint correction in the first place because if you haven't you would now have caused all these scratches on your paint surface and they'd be there because you can't remove them so I'm hoping you can see that just how much imperfection that has actually caused So, to conclude this video, what should you use, a clay mitt or a clay bar? Well, as you could see from the demonstration, a clay mitt will give you a greater surface area when you're actually decontaminating the surface of your vehicle. You will go over your car a lot quicker in a lot less time. However, in our experience, we find that clay mitts don't give you a good a result as a clay bar because you're going to have a smaller piece of clay in your hand and you're going over the car in a more slower detail fashion and we actually find that picks up more contamination than a clay mitt does. So our preference here is generally to use a clay bar. When you do use a clay bar, as mentioned before, in detailing what you want to do is use a least aggressive method working your way up to get the desired result. So you should always start with a soft clay, something similar to clay from Auto Finesse. Moving up to a medium clay, such as auto clay from Built Hamber, or a hard clay if you have to. As a general rule of thumb, the harder the clay, the more imperfections it will cause in your surface, which will require machine polishing out. Also, as mentioned before, if you're going to clay, ideally you want to measure the thickness of the coating you have, because if you cause imperfections, you need to know that you've got enough clear coat to actually machine polish those imperfections out. When it comes to lubrication, do not use detailing sprays because these will leave behind a layer of something, whether it be a wax, a sealant or a ceramic, which will then need to either be wiped away using an alcohol or preparation product or will leave a layer which will need machine polishing off and you're just adding work for yourself. Layering is really important in detailing. So always make sure you use a dedicated clay lubrication product, something similar to Glide from auto finesse which won't leave anything behind but will give you the necessary lubrication for the clay itself so we hope you like this video in the next video we're going to start going into the paint correction phases starting with machine polishes and talking about those so if you like this video don't forget to give us a thumbs up make sure you subscribe make sure you press the bell icon to get alerts for future videos and make sure you follow us on instagram thanks for watching we hope this has been useful and we'll see you on the next one